Hey guys, this is Jan Webb, and today I'm going to go through how to use Teams. Um, some of you have already been trained on Teams and use it quite regularly. Some of you have been trained on Teams and probably haven't seen it in a while, so could use some uh, additional reminders on how the system works. Some of you are new to the, our college and you've never seen Teams before, so um, this will give you information on how it works and how to get into the system. Um, Teams is an early alert system and the way it, the, its intention is to allow instructors to actually submit alerts to a group of people to, who will assist in providing the student support. Um, it was, the system was created by the uh, TCSG State Data Center uh, and the reason for this, uh, the creation of this software is because this website is because um, in the past technical colleges were looked at as doing well based on the number of students they can enroll. Well in recent years, in the last couple of years, um, Governor Deal has said that no, we need to be looked at based on how many students we can retain, how many graduate, how many get a job in field. So uh, t TCSG decided, okay, well our, our local colleges are going to need to help. They're going to need some kind of tracking system our system so that they can support the instructors and so that, that's why this this um, software teams was created um, so far we've trained all gen ed teachers on how to submit alerts again some are actually submitting the alerts others um, have not been using it um, as much as I would like so if you're one of those who have kind of strayed away from using the system uh, please I encourage you to use it um, it's just we've been able to help so many so many students um, also, some of you may be new to TCSG um, and have never been trained on Teams. You may be an adjunct instructor working part-time. So for whatever reason, uh, this video today is going to uh, show you how the system works, but it's also going to show you a few, few things that are going to make it easier for you to use. Um, again, all Gen Ed instructors have been trained on the system. We've recently begun expanding the training to program instructors. Um, your role as an instructor will be to identify students who need support and submit an alert in Teams. Um, this is not meant to take the place of what you're already doing to support your students. You know your students better than I or anybody as part of the Teams group could. You know what to do. You know what's worked for your students in the past. So please keep doing what you're doing to support your students. But also, if you think that you need additional support with your students, submit the alerts and we will do what we can to contact the student and offer whatever we can to, to help them with whatever the issues are. For example, um, students can be failing, they can be missing assignments, not attending the way that they should be, and um, they could, some students actually come to you occasionally and they actually say that they're having personal struggles. They may be passing your class, but there may be issues going on at home or at work or, or financially that they need help with. Please submit those alerts too because we can help them connect to some resources. Um, in, the, in recent years, we've developed a lot of resources both internally and externally for our students. They don't get used as much as we like for them to be used, but um, if you submit an alert, we, we can make sure that they get connected to those resources. Um, when submitting alerts, it, it, there are a few things that are important for you to be aware of. Um, first of all, when you submit an alert, it becomes part of the student's record. So make sure that when you submit an alert, it's very objective and that you're careful what you say um, because, again, it does bec become a part of their student record. Also, be careful how your alert is worded because when we send students emails through the team system, they're actually able to see what you've submitted in your alert. So you don't want to say, oh, this student is you know, lazy and not there and didn't attend, not taking this seriously. You just want to be very direct and objective with what you say. This student is not attending classes according to the requirements of the syllabus and the student is not passing. And it's also important that you give options for for us, at, for that student at, at the point of the alert submission. For example, what I say to a student who has no chance in the world of passing is going to be totally different to what I say to a student who has a chance to pass. Um, so make sure that we know what the options are for the student, student at the point 
uh, that you submit the alert. For example, you might say um, a student is missing assignments, can submit those assignments, but have to have them submitted by May 1st or whatever the date is. So that way we can call the student, remind them what they need to do, meet with them if we have to, and get them started on the path of submitting the work. How to log on to Teams. <clears throat> Some of you have a KMS account. If you have a KMS account, uh, is your username and your username will be the same. If you don't have a KMS account, don't worry about it. But if you have a KMS account, it'll be use it'll be the same log login username. Make sure that you get whatever your login name is that you type it exactly as as it's supposed to be typed. For, for instance, in my case, it's capital DPR backslash JWeb. If I don't type it like that, I'll never get in. So make sure if you're having trouble logging onto the, the team system that you check your username and make sure you're typing it in correctly. Um, for those of you who don't have a username and a password, you can expect an email from the state data center with information on how to set up your password. It's important that you follow the, read, read the email um, thoroughly and understand what it's asking you to do and then you can click on a link and and create a password for yourself um, so just make sure that you that you look for that email and that when you get it you use the correct username and that you remember your password um, teams can only be used with Internet Explorer so make sure that you when you log in if you're seeing funny things happening on your screen that you double check the browser that you use because I've tried to use it with Chrome and it starts doing really crazy things on the screen. So double check your browser if that happens. And also you need to set um, up your compatibility settings to uh, add tcsg.edu as an approved site. No worries if you don't know how to do that. I'm going to go through that in just a minute. And the email for, for logging onto Teams is https colon forward slash forward slash teams.tcsg.edu. Um, Let's see here. Let me back out of this. Okay. You can go to the website that I told you to go to to log into Teams. Or another option is actually to go to Blackboard. Um, we have a link in Blackboard now once you're logged into the system. Oops. When you log into your, your Blackboard account as an instructor, you can see here there's a link to Teams. It doesn't log you into Teams, but it does take you to the Teams login page, and then you can use your login credentials. Um, it's now a good point for me to point out that if it ever if ever you forget your um, password, you can click on KMS, and you can go here and click on Forget Password. Okay. And it will let you, allow you to set up your um, set up a new password. If that doesn't work, and you still can't log on, click on Help Desk, and you can send an email to the state data center, just saying that I, I do not remember my password for Teams. Please reset it for me. Thanks. And so they'll they'll send you an email. They're very fast. They'll send you an email right away. Okay. So with that said, um, I'm gonna log off here. And I'm going to go to the team's website. Log in. Yowzer. There we go. Um, okay, so here we are at the site. This is the main page. These are all the alerts that I've received spring semester. These are not all of them. These are all of them that I'm waiting to hear back from the students. I actually received over 350, which I was really proud of. I probably re received about 360 alerts for spring 2016. Um, so I've tried to work them. I've, I've con tried to contact every student who, for whom I received an alert. So these are the ones that I'm still waiting on. Um, again, I, you can submit an alert, but it doesn't mean that a student's going to contact me. But I do make every effort. Uh, when you submit an alert, let's go there. When you submit an alert, 
you click on submit alert and it brings up the screen and you can search for a student for whom you want to submit an alert either by ID last name or CRN number to submit by just to find an individual student you can type in the last name I'll select the student you can click on her name and you display the alert form and then down here you actually have to submit this is where you put your so, so your alert information so you have to actually submit an alert type and when you look at these alert types we actually have people who are connected to each of these uh, alert sites so if it's an academic affairs issue or financial aid issue or if it's a, um, an alert f pertaining to nothing above here it will come to me and I will and I will work on that alert actually lately I've been working on all the alerts but anyway the idea is to have a team of people and we do have some people in place to help me with the with the calling and the contacting of the students so let's just say that this student is having attendance issues um, again you have to su submit an alert type let's just say student has missed four out of the five last days can still pass but my, cannot miss any more days okay so we've got the alert and you can actually make it course specific so you can actually click on course specific it will bring up the semester you click the correct semester and then you click the click the class for that semester so drop down you click on the drop down and select your class and then you submit and clear the search and then all this will go away and it will bring up a new student <coughs> I'm not going to do this because this student is actually an excellent student so I'm not going to submit an alert on her um, but you get the idea of how it works if I go back to the dashboard and I click submit alert again um, I can also search by CRN and my, I'm teaching college success this spring semester so I'm going to click it put in my CRN and it's for spring semester and hmm. of course I can't remember it I think I was searching I had to click this button okay anyway so what I can do is I can search by the class and I can actually select the students who have not been att attending um, and I can select attendance um, uh, students stopped attending can pass shoot I need a typing class can pass but uh, must submit missed work by May 1 okay so then what I would do is I would submit the submit and clear the search after that so I would actually get since I sub checked two students I would act, the team system would actually create two alerts one for each student and then those students would be called individually um, and also, it, um, because it submits two separate alerts, there's, they won't get the same email. Everything will be totally separate for these students. So if I go back to the dashboard and I click on the first student, <clears throat> this is an alert that I've already worked. Um, I received two alerts on this student, one in January and one in February. Um, I actually... Um, can see the student's history, the grades that she made for fall 2005, and we received math compa scores on her. She must have transferred in an English course since an English test score is not listed here. So what I can do is um, I click on communications, and the first thing that I'm going to do is try to call the student. And then if I don't get the student on the phone, I'm going to try to I'm going to, I will email her and send a postcard to the the home. The email is and the and the postcard are both very generic. I'm trying to reach you. Please contact me as soon as possible. You can see here in all communications that that's what I've done with the student. I have actually um, this is the alert did not show for any classes when no showed for two out of three of the classes she signed up for. 
Um, this is the email to the student. You can see here, I assist students who may be struggling with the coursework. I received an alert from one of your instructors. I need to speak to you as soon as possible. And then uh, the message that I had was I did kind of try to call the student. I got an incorrect phone number. So I did email the student and I will and I did send an email postcard to her home. And then after that, I wait for the student to contact me. This student has not contacted me. So if I don't hear from the student, I just, you know, I, I feel I've made every effort and I'm going to close out the alert. If, um, if there is uh, a contact made with the student if they call me back or if I reach them when I initially call them we discuss what they can do to resolve their issues and um, then I I check whatever intervention we discuss usually I refer them back to the instructor if if they have work to make up and then I click the attempts that I've made did I contact the student yes did I actually talk to the student yes and then I click um, spoke to the student and whatever else we decided uh, we will go in this this um, comment section and then I'll save and close the alert I failed to mention this that if when you submit an alert to me or to the system um, I will receive an email and everybody on each individual team if it if it's a financial aid issue the financial aid team will receive an email if it's a business office they will receive an email so the team that works the alert will receive an email saying there's an alert for you to work and then once we close it, you will get an alert saying, okay, this, this, uh, this was, um, the student was contacted or we weren't able to reach the student. So either way, you'll get an email saying that the alert's going to be closed. Um, and you can always come back in at any time if you haven't received that closing email and find out exactly what's going on with the student. The way you would do that is that you click on alerts listing. And... Um, you can click on, I would select all status, all alerts, no matter what's been done to them. And then once the screen comes up, you can search by student ID or student name. So um, that's basically it in a nutshell. Um, remember that when you submit alerts to be careful what you say. Remember that um, you need to be an Internet Explorer. Also, I don't think I've mentioned the compatibility settings that you have to be an Internet Explorer. If you go to Tools and you can click, click on Compatibility Settings, you need to make sure that TSCG is down in this box. TSCG.edu, TCSG.edu is down here. Usually when you click on Compatibility set Settings, it will be up in this area and you just need to uh, click on Add. And um, if you're having problems with your, again, with your uh, computer using the team system, check your browser for, make sure it's Internet Explorer, and then make sure that you've added um, tcsg.edu to your compatibility settings. Um, that's all I have. I hope this was helpful. If you um, have any questions, you can always call me or email me. Again, I'm Jan Webb. Um, if you want me to sit down with you individually to, to see what we can do to uh, you know, figure out any issues that you're having with it, I'll be more than happy to do it. It's just important that you start using the alert system right away. Uh, again, if you need support for any student, no matter what the reason, and don't ever wonder whether or not you should submit an alert, just submit it, su just submit the alert, and we'll take it from there. Um, there's a system on GNET2. Please do not use that system. This is the system that we're moving toward. This team system is the one that you should start using immediately for any kind of student issues that you might have. Again, thank you for your time. Um, again, I'm available if you have any questions. Thank you.